I know that in my community, we are a lot of developers that like Vue.js and Nux.js. So let's go, let's see what is the version free. So I got this application already set up uh, with a bit of design with Tailwind CSS there. On Vue 2, we had what we call the Option API. So the Option API, basically, it was a script part with an export default, okay? And inside we had this data function that used to return some data. So for instance, we would have a name here with Guillaume, okay? And then down there, what we can do is that we can trigger this uh, name there with the curly brackets and the interpolation of provided by Vue.js. So when I update there, so we don't see it, I should put maybe text white everywhere on my, there we go. We have our uh, template that is interpolated by the uh, variable just up there. Here, this is what we call the option API, okay? We add this export default object with data, we could have methods, we could have a uh, life cycle such as mounted, we could have watchers, etc., etc. Now, with view free, we have what we call the composition API. You could still use export default, but instead of having data, you would have a setup. And in here, you would have a name, okay, which could be Guillaume, let's start like this, and then we return this name. And if I get back again and I update, there we go. So now setup uh, is a function that return actually all the JavaScript logic. This has come with view free and composition API. So now all the logic of your code is contained by this setup function. We don't need to learn how Vue.js is working. We don't need to learn that we have to put a variable into the data function. We don't need to put our function inside methods. We just need to write plain JavaScript. So you can write composition API this way, but you can also use the setup parameter, call it what you want, on the script, which means that here I can now plainly write JavaScript and I don't need to return anything with the setup in my script. I think it's better instead of exporting an object and stuff, let's just write plain JavaScript in here like we do in Svelte, for instance. I, I find it more comfortable. Let's test that if we had a button down there, uh, we would uh, give the name a new value and this value would be a string with hello. Does it work? So when I get back and I click, Guillaume doesn't change to hello because we didn't trigger and we didn't use the reactivity API. What is the reactivity API? Simply here our variable is just a plain variable. It's not reactive. With view free, what we introduce is the reactivity API. So basically here we will have two type of reactivity variable that we can use, ref and reactive. And basically what you have to do is that when you create a variable, you have to wrap it with ref or reactive. So I'm going to put ref and inside ref, I'm going to put Guillaume, all right? And now I told view to watch for this variable here. And if I get back and I click, we see that there is a reactivity. So now every time you are going to create new variables and you want to store data that you think it might change in the future, you have to use ref or reactive. So to access the real value of this variable, I have to simply type point value. And when I update, we see that down there, I got the value. So every time you will need to change a variable inside your script setup up there, you will use name.value with the composition API. So ref here, most of the time, is used by strings, numbers, boolean. This is what we call primitives. And reactive, most of the time, it's going to be used for object or arrays. So let's say that we would have a person and this person name would be Guillaume and there would be an age of 34. And let's say that down there, we would change the name this way. Exactly the same, when I click, it is working. I can access my person and change its value dynamically. 
So reactive is for objects and arrays. But what if I pass an object to ref? It's possible and it will work perfectly fine. Actually, ref will transform this object into a reactive object. But reactive is considered as the function that will watch deeply objects and arrays. However, if you try to destructure your person here and doing something like this is equal to person, unfortunately, name here will not be reactive. For this example, I'm going to delete this name up there. And how can I do to destructure my object and still keep reactivity? Vue found a solution to this problem and this solution is called to ref. Then what I would have to put is my to ref there on persons can get back to my name. All right. And if I click, there we go. It's working. Let's try with another example. We would have a post which will be reactive with a list of article. We display this list down there and then we would have a button that changed the title of the first post. So when I get here, when I click, we see that dynamically my post title has been updated directly in the list. All right, that's really cool. But what we can use also is computed. Before we used to put computed inside at the root of our export default object. Now we have to import also computed from view. So basically exactly like um, what we did before, we would have computed that is a function that return a value. So we would have a value of one, two, three, whatever. And down there, what I can do is to put my list and there we go. I got my element there. In some cases, you would need to watch for a certain value very deep. What you can do there is to watch at your value, then return after the uh, elements you want to calculate. Basically, for the life cycles, it's exactly the same, but they changed. Now we use unmounted function, for instance, and what, when is it unmounted? Here, we can console log mounted. We've got our function there that will be triggered unmounted. So when I inspect there, there we go, I got mounted. So now life cycles are also imported. For the props, it's exactly the same. But instead of importing our function props from view, we can directly create props this way and create what we call a define props. Okay. And this define props would be, for instance, item with a type of object. There we go. And to access these props in our template, what we can do is simply put props.item there. If you want to destructurate your props, the best solution would be to create another item there. So basically I would have const item.props.item there. Then I can access item easily in my template this way. For the emits, it's the same. You can use define emits this way and define your emits inside here. Finally, for the watchers, it's the same. We have now a watch function. So what I would do is to watch. Watch for what? Name.value. Because remember, here we got a ref. So then what I would do is console log this new value up there. And down there, I would create an input for the example. And this input will be on V model name. As you see, we console log the value that has been triggered. Basically, view free is introducing to us several new concepts of watch, such as watch effect, all right, which will be used in several cases to trigger when a value will be changed. But also we have watch post effect and we have also watch sync effect. With view free, we don't need to put loaders anymore. Also, what we can use is suspense. Suspense is a built-in component that helps us to change actually when we have a downloading uh, element. So let's say here we would use a fallback and in there what we would use is a loading component. And then when the loading would be done, we would trigger default our list of elements. There's also teleport that helps you to move code to another place. So instead to a body or let's say that a list ID, 
for instance. So the code that will be here on my app will be moved to another place, another space somewhere where there would be a div with the list ID. If you know Vue 2, you will feel very comfortable at Vue 3. I know it's a bit hard to switch from the version 2 to the version 3, but this new version is amazing for me. I think it's one of the best moves that we could have done with Vue 3. Okay guys, this was a quick introduction. Thanks for watching this video. Please don't forget to subscribe or leave a comment and see you soon. Ciao!